Roseline Public School presents a special news report on Netty. Brought, Brought to you by, by the students of Mr. Solomon's fourth grade class. Hi, I'm Priya Gill, and this is my classmate and co-host, Anthony Ferreira. And we are here to bring you a special news report on Netiquette. Throughout our newscast, we'll be talking to the students of Rosevine Public School, and later on, we'll be hearing from some experts on cyberbullying. So, why are we doing this? You can thank our teacher, Mr. Solomon. Yes, viewers, after giving several exciting lessons on netiquette, Mr. Solomon wanted to see how much of what he said actually stayed in our brains. And instead of answering the usual quiz, he asked us to do a newscast. Exciting stuff. Now let's get to it. Let's find out what our class correspondents, Emma, Gavin, and Grace, found out when they hit the hallways, mics in hand, and asked the students of Rosevine Public School these questions. First, our correspondent Emma asked, What is netiquette? I think netiquette is a set of rules to properly behave on the internet. Um, it's made up of two words, net and etiquette, and it's a set of rules for nice behavior online. Well, I think netiquette is having good manners online and treating others online as you would treat them in real life. Then Gavin asked, what are some examples of netiquette? Some examples of netiquette are respecting other people's privacy and remembering that when you post something online, it can go everywhere. Well, I think an example of netiquette is if something's meant to be funny, then you could put a little smiley to show that you're joking. Some examples of netiquette are if you get a bad text message or email, um, don't respond to the person electronically. Um, go to the person on your own um, in real life um, because it, what the person said might not, be, might not be intended what he or she meant to say. Then Grace asked, what examples of lack of netiquette do you see online with your friends? Some examples of lack of netiquette that I see online are um, people who say really rude words um, online except words that they wouldn't say in real life. I do not see netiquette when I'm talking to my friends online, but when I'm talking to my grandparents online, I do see netiquette. Well, sometimes people don't use netiquette and they put their words in capital letters as if they're yelling. Nice work, correspondents. Priya, how about we recap and add some more info? Good idea! Netiquette is made up of two words. Internet. Etiquette. What's the internet? That's a no-brainer. But what does etiquette mean? Etiquette is a set of rules for everybody on how to behave properly. You know, like not calling people names, or being polite, like saying please and thank you. Etiquette is basically treating people how you'd like to be treated with R-E-S-P-E-C-T, respect. Well put. Thank you. When you smush internet and etiquette together, you get netiquette. Netiquette is a set of rules for everybody on how to behave properly, online. We know. Who wants more rules? But netiquette rules can help you make the time you spend online fun and safe. And we all like to have fun. And we all have the right to be safe. So you see, netiquette is a win-win situation. Okay, what are some examples of netiquette? Netiquette. Hmm. Well, I'd never do this in real life. Meet me after school! When you write in all capital letters and emails, on discussion boards, or while messaging, the person reading your message may think you're yelling at them. Why would I do it online? Yelling is just rude. Don't you think, Priya? Oh, I can see by the emoticons you're holding that you're surprised and mad. Interesting. Yeah, that's how I feel when someone yells at me for no reason. <laughs> yes, sirree. Add a couple of emoticons when you're right, and people will have a good idea how you're feeling. Um, where were we? I think you were going to cover online life versus real life next. Oh, right. Thanks, Mr. Solomon. And don't forget to cover privacy, online security, and cyberbullying. All that's part of netiquette? If it isn't netiquette, it certainly is closely connected. Oh, boy. I hope we have enough time. That's a lot to cover. Okay. 
Online life versus real life. Let's get to it. Roll the tape, please. Hi. Today, I'm going to do my speech on Rebecca. Rebecca's shirt is ugly. Her eyes are too close together, and that nose. I don't even know the right word for it. Gigantic, maybe? Rebecca's hair is dull. Hello? Ever heard of shampoo? Rebecca smells, too. And since I don't want to waste any more of my time talking about this loser, I'm just going to say the end. <laughs> that has to be an exaggeration. People wouldn't actually get up in front of a class and do a speech like that, would they? This probably wouldn't happen in front of a class, but it does happen in the schoolyard and often online. Nobody even told her to stop. I don't get it. The thing to remember is anybody who sees bullying happening should try to do something to stop it. You know what I don't get? People bully all the time online. It's as if they forget that it's really like bullying others in front of a crowd. I've seen tons of mean stuff written about people in chat rooms. Kind of like that girl's speech. I don't know why they do it. We all know what's wrong in real life and wrong online. Let's talk to the students of Rose Vine to see what they think. Why do you think people bully or badmouth other people? I think people badmouth other people online because they're either jealous, they, th they think it's cool, but most of all I think they see it in a movie and they think it's okay. I think people bully other people because they don't feel good about themselves and they want the other person to feel bad. Well, I think people badmouth people online because their friends or family do it or they see it on TV shows or movies. It doesn't make sense, but some people um, badmouth other people because it makes them feel better to make other people feel worse than them because they're the king of the world. <laughs> Do you think it's easier to bully online and why? I think it's way easier to ban off online than in real life because when the person who you're sending the message to doesn't really know who it is and you're not face to face. I think it's way easier to badmouth or bully online than in real life because in real life you have to see their reaction and online you don't have to see their reaction. I think it's easier to badmouth people online because more people are doing it and it seems normal. Um, I think it's easier to badmouth or bully online because you don't see the reaction and you don't feel sad um, about what you said. Were you ever badmouthed online? How did it make you feel? I know someone who was and it made them feel horrible and left out and like nobody was there to, to handle her emotions. No, I've never been badmouthed or bullied online, but if I was, I would be angry and sad, and I would tell my parents, I would ask, why is, why is he or her doing this to me? I was never badmouthed or bullied online, but my friends have been, and they said that they felt really unhappy and all alone. I think a good thing to remember is, if you wouldn't do it in real life, why would you do it online? Yep. If it's wrong in real life, it's wrong online. Okay, I have a confession to make. I made fun of someone's favorite song on a music discussion board once. What happened? Well, we insulted each other back and forth. But then I felt bad about it after, so I went back and deleted all the posts. Thank goodness no one can read them anymore. Oh, you mean these posts? Ah, give me that! Information you post online may become public if someone reposts it to a public site. Don't worry, I'll rip them up. It just goes to show that someone can have copies of what you write online, even if you think you've deleted everything. When you write something online, it could stay around forever, even after you've deleted it. In cyberspace, or print it out. Yikes! I think it's the perfect time to inform our viewers about... Online privacy and security. Great idea, I think. Breaking news! This just in. Two best friends, or shall I say, two former best friends, are fighting because... Well, I'll let Grace take it from here. Grace, can you tell us what's happening? Certainly, Priya. This is what I've been able to piece together so far. Allison and Marina are best friends who share their email passwords with each other. 
The two got into an argument when Marina beat out Allison for a spot on the volleyball team. Allison says that Marina never even wanted to try out for the team until Allison said she was going to. Angry, Allison went into Marina's email account and sent out a photo of Marina in her superhero pajamas with the message, Will you be my hero? to everybody in her address book. Now Marina is very hurt and furious that Allison betrayed her trust. This situation doesn't look good. Back to you, Priya. I hope those two former best friends can work it out. I haven't shared my password with anyone, and I never will. And I bet no one could ever figure it out. I bet I can guess it. No way. March 20, English, Rosevine, Skiing, Shortbread, Mooby. I guessed it, didn't I? Your password's Mooby, your dog. Yeah, how'd you guess? I just started rhyming off stuff I knew about you. Like your birthday, your favorite subject, stuff like that. I better change my password. You could totally hack into my accounts. I'd never do that, but someone else might. Even your best friend. So let's use the hack meter to make you a new password. Applesauce. 2009. Rainbow. Hackable. One purple one. Skate 21. Hard to hack. Hmm. Mr. Solomon said the best kind of password has a random combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. Oh, yeah, and he said we should think of a sentence and then use the first letters of those words. How about... I, too, like chocolate cake today. Turn around. I need to make my new password. A strong password is a good way to reduce the chance of trouble online. While you're doing that, I'll check in once again with our correspondent. They've been asking teachers about how to deal with online privacy and security. When it comes to privacy online, here are some guidelines for you to follow. One of the first guidelines to follow is to keep your password private. Remember to change it often, every month or every, every two months. When it comes to your username, make sure it doesn't identify your gender, age or location. And remember, it is very important to keep your personal information, like your full name, address, or phone number, private. Finally, only give out any personal information with your parents' permission. For example, if you want to enter a contest, don't give out any personal information because that's what they're going to ask you. Someone figured out my brother's online gaming password once. Really? What happened? My brother went to sign in one day and noticed that all of his teammates had kicked him off the team. My brother didn't know what was going on. He finally figured out that someone from another team had guessed his password and sent nasty messages to my brother's teammates, pretending to be him. Pretending to be someone else online is often against the rules of the website. You can report it to the website. That sounds like cyberbullying to me. Me too, but just to be sure, Let's see if we can find a definition of cyberbullying on the net. There are so many. How do we know what one is legit? Not every website has reliable information. Dig deep and investigate to find good information. There's Kids Help Phone. Mr. Solomon said that's a reliable site. Cyberbullying is when someone uses technology, such as a computer or cell phone, to hurt someone else on purpose. Gavin says we can roll the video of our cyberbullying expert, Dr. Faye Mishna, to tell us how cyberbullying is different from real life bullying. Perfect timing. Roll it. In traditional bullying, students of bully might be older, stronger, bigger, they might be more popular or accepted, they might get higher grades, or they might bully together with others so they gang up on one student. In cyberbullying, the person has power because they can send the material to anybody and anywhere. Another way that cyberbullying is different than traditional bullying is that traditional bullying involves repeating the bullying. This is a complicated thing in cyberbullying. Because it happens in the public domain, it means that emails, text, pictures, or videos can be seen far and wide. Also, it can be sent out not only by the person who is doing the cyberbullying, but it can be done by anyone else who can get hold of it. Then many people can look at, look at it over and over again. 
Another very important difference is that it can be difficult or actually impossible for the victimized student to delete or get rid of the material so the bullying doesn't end. Thank you, Faye. Viewers, while Faye was telling us the difference between cyberbullying and real-life bullying, we printed off some emails from the kids' health phone website. We'd like to read them to you. <clears throat> this email's from Sasha. Every day after dinner, I chat with my friends online. It's a lot of fun. We talk about what happened at school, movies, music, lots of stuff. But last night, all my friends ganged up on me and blocked me from their friends list. I couldn't chat with anyone. Is this cyberbullying? I don't think my friends would bully me, would they? Cyberbullying hurts in real life. Let's see what a counselor at Kids Help Phone thinks about Sasha's email. Is this cyberbullying and what should she do about it? This is definitely a situation where it's cyberbullying and a good way to tell is if it's inappropriate when it's in person, it's also inappropriate when it's online. In this case, this is social bullying being done online. One of the things that we encourage people to remember is that it's okay to acknowledge your feelings. If this situation makes you feel hurt or angry or frustrated, then acknowledge that and it's okay to feel that way. Also speaking with an adult that you can trust, like a parent, a guardian, a teacher, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, somebody that you feel you can trust and that you can talk to who can also support you with the situation. Having support with bullying is one of the best ways to try and deal with a bullying situation, so try to speak up about it. Don't keep your feelings bottled up inside. When it comes to dealing with your friends, it may be helpful for you to speak to one of them rather than the entire group about how this situation has made you feel. I recommend that you choose the friend that you, feel, you felt like you had the best connection with because it's assumed that if you have a, if a friendship with somebody, then you also are good at communicating with them. Expressing your thoughts is important. Never keep them bottled up inside. And this is one of the ways that you can help deal with cyberbullying. Here's another email. This one is from Dexter. There's a guy in my class who doesn't like me. He got my picture and pasted a photo of my head on top of different animals. Then he sent it to everyone in our class. I was so embarrassed. I didn't want to go to school the next day. I can't believe someone would do that. Let's talk to a principal to see what might happen in a situation like this. As principal of the school, it's really important that all children are safe at school. This situation is very serious. It's serious to post information or say anything that would harm, potentially harm another individual. And it's, it's also important to note that it doesn't matter that it didn't happen at school. If it involves children from the same school, it really is a school issue. Let me tell you a little bit about what I would do in this situation. The children in the school uh, would be investigated. We would go through a situation where we could talk together in my office so we could find out more information about what actually happened. The website, the email, would be a very important piece for us to take a look at. That is documentation of what actually happened and that information would be the evidence that we would keep. Also the parents would be very important in this situation. They do need to be involved so they can be partners in, the, in helping us solve the problem as well as making a plan for what we need to do next. I think we have time to read one more email. This one's from Tim. He writes, I was messaging with my friend Callie after school, and she kept asking me what girl I liked in our class. I finally told her Courtney. The next day I found out when we were messaging each other, three of her friends had been there with her. Worst thing is, they saved the chat log and forwarded it to everyone at school. I'm so mad. What should I do? Wow, that'd be horrible. You think you're telling your friend a secret, and then everyone finds out. Let's talk to the kid's health phone counselor again. This is a good example of how something that's online is there forever. And so it really is important for you to be careful with who you share and what you share online. Especially because some people may use it to their advantage, exactly like this situation that Tim found himself in, where it's cyberbullying. If he didn't feel comfortable sharing who he liked in the class, then maybe he should have followed his instincts. But since he did, we can talk about ways that he can deal with that. First of all, it's important to acknowledge your feelings. Next, you may want to look to a trusted adult to try and express these thoughts. Now, a teacher might be an important person to talk to in this situation because not only do they know you, they may also know the person that you're talking about who's bullying you. And in this situation, the teacher can bring together you, that 
that person, your parents, maybe even their parents, and get a team effort to try and get the bullying to stop. And also remember that if anyone ever treats you in a threatening or an abusive manner online, or they're using harassing type information um, online, then you may also want to consider documenting that information, which means saving emails or maybe saving the information that you share in a conversation and even contacting the police. All our cyberbullying experts had some really good things to say. I agree. We learned a lot. And now for the part of the newscast that you've all been waiting for. The Netiquette Quiz. We're going to ask you some questions to find out how much of what we said actually stayed in your brains. Let the multiple choice questions begin. What is Netiquette? A. A set of rules on how to behave. B. A set of rules for everybody. C. A set of rules for everybody and how to behave online. Or D. A term used for surfing the internet. Netiquette is the etiquette for the internet. Why is netiquette important? A. Some people need to follow rules. B. It makes going online fun. C. It makes going online safe. Or D. It makes going online fun and safe. Netiquette makes going online fun and safe. Everyone has the right to feel safe online. What is the best way to make a password? A. Use a word you'll remember, like your middle name. B. Use a combo of letters, numbers, and symbols. C. Use your phone number. You won't forget that. Or D. Use the same password as your friend. The best password is a random combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. Remember how easy it was for Priya to guess my password because it was my dog's name. Which online password is the hardest to guess? A. Marie B. Muffin318 C. Exclamation mark IL2PMG exclamation mark Or D. 200906 Exclamation mark IL2 PMG exclamation mark is the hardest password to guess because it contains a random combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. Which of the following are safe ways to share personal information online? A. Give out your name, address, and phone number to anyone who asks for it. B. Never give out your name, address, and phone number without your parents' permission. C. Give out your name, address, and phone number only to people you know and trust offline. Or D. Both B and C. The only time it is safe to share personal information online is when you know and trust the person offline. When is it safe to share your secrets and private issues online? A. When it's a friend that I know and trust offline. B. When it's a friend that I met online. C. When it's a trusted site like Kids Help Phone. Or D. Both A and C. It is okay to share secrets and private stuff online with people you know and trust offline, like the Kids Help Phone counselor we talked to, because Kids Help Phone is a trusted site for kids. Is it ever okay to share your friend's personal information? A. Yes. B. No. Or C. Only if another friend asks you for it. If your friend has told you personal information in person or online, it's never okay to share it with someone else. What is cyberbullying? A. Bullying that happens online. B. Using technology to make fun of someone. C. Just like real life bullying, only online. Or D. All of the above. Cyberbullying is when people threaten, harass, embarrass, or exclude others by using technology like computers or cell phones. What is an example of cyberbullying? A. Making a hateful blog about someone. B. Spreading rumors, lies, and secrets online. C. Rating people on how ugly they are. Or D. All of the above. All of these are examples of cyberbullying. So are making threats, calling people names, and blocking other people. What should you do if someone cyber bullies you? A. Respond and tell the person to stop it. What they are doing is cyberbullying. B. Respond, and if they don't stop, 
ignore them and keep copies of the cyberbullying. C. Tell a trusted adult like a parent, guardian, teacher, etc. Or D. Any of the above. Remember, if the first person you talk to doesn't help, find someone else who can. No one deserves to be bullied, online or in real life. Which person could cyberbully you? A. A real-life friend B. A friend you met online C. A classmate or D. All of the above Everyone has the potential to cyberbully someone else. A real-life friend, a friend you met online, a classmate, and even you. What should you do if you see someone being cyberbullied? A. Respond and tell the person doing the cyberbullying to stop it. B. Respond, and if they don't stop, ignore them and keep copies of the cyberbullying. C. Tell a trusted adult like a parent, guardian, teacher, etc. Or D. Any of the above. No one deserves to be bullied, online or in real life. And if you see cyberbullying happening, these are the things you should do. Well, viewers, that quiz wasn't that hard, was it? Anthony, I think we can call our special news report on etiquette a wrap. We're done already? Wow. Well, thanks to everyone who helped us. We couldn't have done it without you. Signing off for Rosemine Public School, this is Priya Gill. And Anthony Ferreira.